All right, so I saw this here, and I immediately thought it was pretty interesting because um, I saw the word terrapin in there. And terrapin means turtle, which I know from reading Uncle Remus books as a kid, um, which I guess those might be problematic now, but what, I guess I don't know. I just didn't know that as a kid, but whatever the case, I learned that terrapin means turtle, and so I just went to look that up, and um, and indeed it does mean, mean turtle. So, I, yeah, I stopped here because I thought, oh my gosh, this is turtle soup, uh, which I guess was, you know, pretty popular around that time. This was, this book was printed in 1918, so, yeah pretty popular around that time but then I also didn't recognize this word protose and I was like what the heck is protose and so I went and looked that up and apparently this is something specifically made at the uh, Battle Creek Sanitarium and it is a meat substitute uh, so it's like basically the brand name of uh, this meat substitute, protose, and so it's not actually turtle soup. Kind of funny that they would make something that was, you know, it's weird because, yeah, there's definitely meat substitutes today for popular meats, but we don't really think about how that might have changed over the years, so it's just kind of funny that they would have used a meat substitute to try and get turtle soup. It's just kind of a funny, funny idea. Um, but there you go. So not actual turtle soup, fake turtle soup, which in a way is even more interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to just flip over to this other page as well, because I came across this earlier. Um, while looking through and it just seems like such a simple idea and there's not that many ingredients or whatever but I started reading the recipe and I'm just like oh my gosh this sounds kind of gross I mean it might be good I'm sure it must have been good I'm sure that this would taste all right once you put it in your mouth but just the way that they describe cooking it I don't think it's something we would ever just think to do today sounds very heavy and kind of combining olives and this creamy sauce I don't know it just doesn't sound good um so you're basically making hard-boiled eggs and then you make a white sauce and which is like a Gosh, do many people even make white sauce anymore? I'm sure they do. Um, but just like a floury gravy, like a gravy made out of flour. Um, and then you cut, I thought this was interesting, cut ripe olives from the stones. So they didn't have, apparently, I don't know, I feel like at that time they must have had pitted olives, right? Maybe not. But regardless... This is just assuming you're going to have some olives and they all have this, the pit still in them and you have to cut them off until you get like a third cup of olives. That just seems like so much work. Um, and then you put all of this in a baking dish with breadcrumbs, hard-boiled eggs, olives, white sauce, <laughs> and then you cover it with the breadcrumbs olives, eggs, white sauce, and more breadcrumbs on top, and then you just bake it. I don't know. That just sounds so horrifying. I'm sure it tastes fine. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it sounds, maybe it tastes fine. I don't know, but uh, it just sounds kind of like one of these recipes that you expect to find in an old book. That just sounds really gross and definitely not the not the same as the taste that we have today 
even though even though um, in a way these people were like ahead of their time you know trying to focus on like lots of vegetables um, cutting down on meat and all that stuff um, at the same time it's still they are still of their time um, so yeah with that um, I'm gonna leave this part two off I just thought it was interesting to look at this book um, as I'm getting ready to price it and put it up on eBay um, and I think I saw like one or two others of this one that were for sale or maybe there was one or two others that had already sold sorry I don't know but um whatever the case I as much as I hate to I'm gonna let go of this one and hopefully somebody out there will make use of all these great recipes oh my gosh whatever nuttoline is now I have to look that up <laughs> um what is it like these are all Nuttoline. I wonder if that was another Kellogg's product. Um, because Kellogg, I don't, did I say this in the beginning of the other part one? Um, Kellogg was, uh, the manufacturer or the inventor of Kellogg's cornflakes. And, uh, yeah. So I wonder if this was another one of their products. But, all right, my phone is about to run out of space. Uh, and I'm done with this anyway. So have a good day. See you later.